we have never done anything like this like this is my comfort zone this video it's right there so out there that you can't even see it why do i feel like the forest has just threw up all over my kitchen mushrooms a turkey leg and most importantly crickets happy thanksgiving just looking at this this is not going to be our traditional thanksgiving meal but i wanted to give myself a challenge and really put myself out of my comfort zone. You can kind of see the theme just for looking at these foods. If you were in a survival situation, these are things that you could potentially find. Very much no things from the supermarket, basically. We're literally using crickets for some of these recipes. Wow. The reason for this is because this video is sponsored by the movie Love and Monsters, which is premiering now at home and you can go and watch it on digital and on demand. Very much inspired by that. This is extremely, should I give it a try? You know what? I'm gonna make you wait for it. This is a turkey leg, so I'm actually attempting to make a Thanksgiving meal, except all these items, the reason why they feel so out of place is because they're things that we could find if we were living in like a survival situation. Flour, sugar, all those are things that are made in a factory. These are as close to nature as possible. This is me trying to create an apocalyptical scenario from the comfort of my house. We're gonna get into it and start with the turkey, but it's crazy to think how many things that we consume, they're not the closest to the way they're made in nature. For the turkey, we're gonna season it with some salt and pepper, except we can just use the pre-made powders. Using one of these, we're gonna do it ourselves and create the spices. And what I think will be the most exciting part, a cricket pumpkin pie. I'm allowing myself to use like a knife, for example, because I feel like if we were in the wild, like in a forest, we could use a knife, probably not made of metal, probably made of stone, but it is possible. We were a little bit restricted when it comes to what fat to use on the turkey. Wow, that smells like sweat. This is goose fat. Fat from a bird to cook another bird. I didn't mess up. For the seasoning for the turkey, I've got some of these pink peppercorns and also some salt. We're gonna have to prepare it ourselves. So I'm gonna use that is gonna be very peppery. I've never used one of these. Well, actually, in school, maybe. Oh, I think I got... Oh, that smells so pep... It's so intense, the smell of this. Wow. Me creating apocalyptic scenarios just so I don't have to clean up the kitchen. This doesn't even look like pepper. I think it's because it's pink. But I swear, this smells like... 600 times more intense than the pepper that, you know, the normal pepper that we just use, the powder. That's so weird. Smell that. Maybe we're gonna convert some people to using fresh stuff. This is crazy. I've never smelled pepper as intense as this. It almost smells like a plant. I'm gonna have to literally put my fingers inside the duck bag. We're trying not to use too many things. We're also probably breaking a few health and safety codes. So what's Thanksgiving without salmonella food poisoning? So let's have a look at our salt mixture. I think we might do some extra seasoning on the turkey, but this is just the salt and pepper one. Wow, this is basically a crust. It's not the most traditional because we're not using a full turkey. We're just using the leg. This year, it's not the most traditional Thanksgiving to any of us. I don't get to see my family. So this is, this is how much turkey I make for myself. Next up, we've got more things that we'd be able to find in the nature if this was a truly survival apocalyptic situation. I'm breaking garlic with a literal stone. <laughs> Doesn't get more apocalyptic than this. I cannot wait to show you guys the second recipe because I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about the movie, but we're going to use the bugs and the insects because it's such a huge part of the movie. The reason why we're using those bugs and the crickets that you saw for the dessert is because in the movie Love and Monsters, it's very much an apocalyptic world. 95% of humanity is gone and the world is dominated by giant insects, like giant bugs that are literally the size of bosses. And we're complaining that we have to mix a few ingredients. Very much different levels of difficulty for apocalyptic worlds. I don't even know what kind of mixture I'm making. My hope is that I'm gonna make a garlicky, peppery seasoning for our turkey so that at least it's got a lot of flavor because this is a giant, like, of turkey so i do want to put a lot of flavors in here i've never used a ginger root when i use ginger in a recipe it comes in a powder how powerful is this stuff wow powerful that is no gingerbread cookies taste like so that's the ginger that i'm going to be using i might break it ginger and garlic is like a good combination for food i feel like it might not be very thanksgiving like should we add some pepper in it don't ask me what kind of peppers these are because i have no idea how spicy are they well let's find out i do want to try to do a good job for this video because 
You know, at the end of the day, most of us are not going to be able to see our families. There's just so many things that are different this year in the world. But here's a piece of advice. If you get really sad about the holiday season this year, let's be grateful that 95% of humanity isn't gone and cold-blooded creatures haven't taken over the world yet. A silver lining in this special year. This is more difficult than I was thinking. Should we? The salt and pepper was a little bit easier. I have no idea how we're going to be able to rub this on the turkey. So this is kind of where we're at. It's not the paste that I was hoping for. I don't know why not coming together in the way that we're used to in the supermarket. Forget about the giant box. I wouldn't last a day without my credit card. If this is spicy, my hands are gonna burn. <laughs> You can call this a marinade, basically. We're kind of removing a little bit of what we've done with the pepper. All right. This is basically a tropical Thanksgiving turkey. Uh, I'm not mad. <laughs> We've also got some vegetables. So this was a little bit easier because vegetables, you know, you would find them in nature. So it actually made sense. I'm gonna start with the potatoes. We should probably wash them. I never eat sweet potatoes. So I honestly don't even know if I should cut them. Maybe just cut them in half. It's like tougher than I was expecting. Me discovering a sweet potato for the first time. Then, that's so nasty. These are no good. These have mold growing on them. I love how finding a moldy sweet corn was like the scariest thing that's happened to me all week. When you guys watch the movie Love and Monsters, you'll see that the main character like, is terrified of facing these giant bugs. Like he just freezes at the sight of one of these giant insects. I freeze at the sight of a moldy piece of corn. I feel like mushrooms are a very apocalyptic food. I cannot be trusted with sharp objects. Like you guys know that in general, but these even more. This is supposed to go in. I thought it'd be really cute. If we get lucky with this one. Oh. So the sweet potato was a little bit easier. The main character in the movie, Joel, he's actually a pretty good chef in the bunker that they live in underground. That's another thing that we definitely don't have in common. Even though we're in my bunker. You wouldn't really call me a chef. We're gonna have to disinfect this whole kitchen. Might as well take advantage of that. You know what? It's not gonna happen. That's what it is. This one's gonna be even more difficult. You guys should be glad the salmonella bacteria is not carried through the screen. There's nothing more apocalyptical than me cooking. <laughs> that is basically it. This is our Thanksgiving savory part of the meal made with only ingredients that you'd find if you wandered a forest. So I'm gonna put it in the oven and we're gonna move on to making the pie. We gotta keep going. We're gonna go and make what I think is the classic Thanksgiving dessert, a pumpkin pie, which with ingredients from nature is practically impossible because that means no flour, no sugar. These are crickets, which weirdly are smaller than grasshoppers. We've got a variety of bugs to choose on how to use them on the pie. You know when you get a slice of pumpkin pie and people do a little squirt of cream? I'm thinking of putting a little grasshopper on top. A little Thanksgiving surprise. I get freaked out just by looking at this jar. In the movie, Joel goes on this 85 mile journey with his giant insects just to reunite with his love that he hasn't seen in seven years. The closest I'll ever find to that kind of love, maybe pie crust. This is just, this is just ground almonds. It's called almond flour. I think that's how it's sold. I have used this before to make pie crust and it worked. So I'm gonna cross my fingers that it will work this time around. But keep in mind that we're making this on a cast iron skillet. Never made a pie in a cast iron skillet. To the almond flour, we're gonna add one egg. So we're doing one egg. Well, you could also use like coconut oil. I think that would have been ideal to truly make this as nature-like as possible. I mean, we're literally gonna put crickets in it. It's gonna be pretty nature. We're gonna have to touch a raw egg. I really don't like that. Because this is like a pie crust. It's supposed to be really dry and crumbly, so we really have to work the fat, the butter. It is not sticking to the base, so that's a good thing. In the beginning of this video, I was kind of freaked out, like touching the turkey and everything, because I have a thing with like textures. So this is like a real Thanksgiving miracle that I'm even attempting this. This is coming together surprisingly easy. I feel like the butter is melting a little bit, which is making this easier. If I manage to get a solid slice out of this, I will be seriously surprised. It doesn't look like it's not made with flour. This honestly looks like a three-year-old did it maybe. This also has to pre-bake for around 10 minutes. So I'm gonna put this in the oven, get the turkey out, and then we're gonna make the filling, which should be interesting as well. Do I have to use my hands for that? This is 100% natural, just pumpkin, just blended pumpkin. I should have probably washed the spoon, but I didn't. 
So we're gonna start with that. This is gonna be a lot of filling for our tiny little crust. To this, we're gonna add three eggs. So eggs is a pretty, you know, pretty basic ingredient that you could find anywhere, I think. If you've never seen cream in its natural state, please allow me to change your world. does not look like pumpkin pie and also this is really difficult without an electric mixer what's that solid thing in the middle ew it's not mixing that's the problem like the egg white sort of stays jiggly do you see Ugh. this is a little chunkier than i expected but i honestly think this is as blended as possible the secret to a pumpkin pie is the pumpkin spice i would argue that's all it is these are the single spices that go into a pumpkin pie spice vanilla comes in they call it a bean this is not bean cinnamon sticks this chunky one is nutmeg this cannot be edible these little ones are I honestly have no idea what they are. If someone knows, please let me know in the comment section. For the vanilla bean, I think we have to cut it in half. I've seen Gordon Ramsay do this before, so that is basically what we need. So this, this is very little. This was so expensive for what it is. I love how it seems that I'm the one who's been living in a bunker. I'm like, wow, vanilla, I've never seen it. We got the spices in here and we've also got the vanilla, which it's gone by now. Cinnamon literally looks like a piece of wood. How weird is that? I feel like this is a little too chunky. Maybe we can like only grab like half of it. We're getting there. This is becoming smoother and smoother, but I've been doing this for like legit 20 minutes. It smells so intense of pumpkin pie. A little stick of cinnamon never hurt anybody. So this is gonna go into our pumpkin pie. Wow, that looks like pumpkin soup now. But I feel like that's too much because this smells so strong. Why does that smell so good? It smells incredible in here. Oh wait, we forgot about sugar. I almost forgot the most important ingredient. This is sugar. Um, it doesn't look like sugar because I think this is the sugar before it's processed. Like, this is what comes out of um, a sugar cane. We're gonna crush the sugar and then we're going to transfer it to the mixture is this gonna go white like sugar oh yes that is literally becoming sugar you can see on this side the sugar is kind of getting ready when it looks white i'm coming to the bunker with recipes i know how to make sugar now just pretend this is fully blended entirely because it very much isn't i wish i had a blender to remove all that chunkiness that's what i would do if this was any normal video i didn't forget about the crickets so this is actually going to go on each slice of pie this is going to be like an extra crunch decoration to give it a weird color i'm going to add some matcha powder so matcha is basically made from uh, tea leaves i have no idea what color this is about to turn i was expecting this to go green but it's brown um uh, let's just add a lot this is very hot, but here we've got our pie that we've cooked for around 10 minutes. Honestly, it looks pretty bad. This is the moment we add our pumpkin pie filling to our... This looks exactly like something you made with only things you found in the forest. Imagine when we put the bugs on top. You can't touch the pan too much because... Um, it is really hot and this is cast iron. That is officially it. We're gonna bake this for 30 to 40 minutes. It is an interesting look. It literally looks like it's made of insects. That is not the pumpkin pie I was promised. This is the pumpkin pie that we deserve. So much to choose from. I think I'm gonna go with the grasshoppers. I had my eye on them. I think 12 slices of pie. So I'm gonna do one buck per pie so everyone can truly have the love and monsters experience. It could be worse, we could be eating frog legs. Lining up the full squad. If you squint really hard, it almost looks like walnuts. It's almost like a pecan pie. Then you bite into it and you're like, since when do walnuts have tiny little legs? <gasps> oh no. I'm gonna name this one Joel, cause he's trying to go on a journey. I will be seriously surprised if this slices well. We did make it from scratch, as scratch as we possibly could. This is the bit that I'm scared of because I feel like you might break. Oh my god. Oh my god. Is it weird to think that that looks pretty good? It actually came out perfectly. <laughs> All this work, it comes down to this Thanksgiving meal. This is officially our survival Thanksgiving meal inspired by nature and giant insects.
So this is the turkey that we've made from scratch. Honestly, it looks pretty good. It looks cooked, so that alone, an accomplishment. I thought that maybe the spices was too much, but do you guys see it became crusty like the spices? It smells like a whole turkey and it's just one leg. The sweet potato ended up being probably my favorite thing because it sat on the grease from the turkey. I'm gonna dive into the turkey, so happy Thanksgiving. Oh my God. Wow. Wow, that is spicy. <laughs> so flavorful. That is the most flavorful turkey I've ever had. I don't know how that makes any sense because I made it, so I am ready to drag everything about this. It's that crust on the outside. This whole video, this whole adventure is suddenly worth it. These mushrooms are gonna be so watery, but that's just what they're like. Tastes exactly like the turkey. That is really, really good. It is very watery, but Oh my god, these are incredible as well. I can't even taste the goose fat, it just honestly actually tastes incredible. Probably not very Thanksgiving, but I worked with what I had and it tastes good. I want to prove to you that everything is fully cooked. That is beautiful. Once again, a happy Thanksgiving. You know what I'm grateful for? I'm grateful for the movie Love and Monsters because if it wasn't for the movie, I wouldn't have committed to this challenge the way I did. Mm. Wow, that is literally sweet mashed potato. It's so soft. I'm looking at the eyes of the grasshopper and thinking I might change my mind in a second, but so far, this is incredible. Before I carry on eating my incredible sweet potato that tastes like turkey and my turkey that tastes like every spice that exists in the world, I said I would do it and we're gonna taste nature matcha pumpkin grasshopper pie. I wouldn't be saying this if I didn't mean it, but I am so excited for you guys to go and see Love and Monsters. This video will make a little more sense, but it's honestly a great movie that is available now and I wouldn't be here telling you guys about it unless I really thought it was a great movie and it is and I honestly honestly think you guys are gonna love it. Okay, I'm gonna try the pie alone without the insect first. Wow. I did not see this coming. Matcha and pumpkin is like perfect combination to the point where I don't want to eat the bug with the pie. Oh my god, I cannot believe I have to do this. Do we bite the head or do we bite the wings? I have a glass of water just in case. Whack in the middle. <sighs> Cannot believe I ate that tiny little creature. The body actually didn't taste that bad. It almost tasted like chicken. The wings was the worst part. It wasn't the flavor, it was the texture of the wings because it's dry. But the pie itself, not bad. <laughs> I ate a grasshopper, so I really hope you guys watch Love and Monsters. It is available digitally right now, and if you want to watch it, I'm going to put the link in the description down below so it's easier for you. I know it's Thanksgiving, and I always say this every year that I'm grateful for you guys, but I am that you watch my videos, that you support my content, and I am grateful that I still come up with the weirdest ideas. That's something that I still truly enjoy. And lastly, I am grateful for my friends and for my family because this year especially, we're not going to be able to be together. I'm not going to be able to see them for the whole holiday season, really. So I hope you guys are holding on okay. And I generally believe that maybe next year things are going to pick up a little bit. And meanwhile, let's watch movies and eat really weird foods. Happy Thanksgiving, and I will see you guys on my next video, which should be in one or two days. Bye-bye.